everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to today's episode of Species Shorts. My name is Lindsay, for those of you who haven't joined me before, and welcome to our discussion of a very unique member of the Archaic Homo sapien group. Now, you may recall if you tuned in for Wednesday's session that we have been talking a little bit about this group of hominins that's collectively referred to as the Archaic Homo sapiens. Now, that doesn't mean they're biologically exactly the same species as us, but it's this sort of overarching designation that's been given to a number of different species that lived between roughly a million and let's say 200,000 years ago, um, maybe even a little bit more recent than that. We talked about Homo antecessor on Wednesday, and today's discussion is going to focus on a species called Homo heidelbergensis. So just like we've done with all of the other fossils, I'd like you all to start this discussion just by getting a good look at the individual specimen. So I've got a Homo heidelbergensis skull right here. So just take a very good look at its face. Um, this is one of the ones that when I have young kids look at it, they get a little bit freaked out by it. They think it looks a little bit scary. Um, hopefully you're not scared by it, but just make some observations, things you notice about its eyebrows, what the nose looks like, how thick and big the cheekbones are. Um, take a look at the underside of the skull. Um, and just so I'll, it's in the same orientation as it has been for the other episodes, I'll hold it this way. This is the back of the skull here. This is the front right here. So take a look at what that looks like to you. Notice the way the teeth look, the position of the foramen magnum. You may notice too on this particular one, and I'll turn it to its side right now, um, that there's actually a big hole right here. I can put my hand right in here. Um, this piece of the cranium isn't actually, the cast isn't finished. Um, so it doesn't have like a nice rounded smooth side. But on the other side, we do have a complete piece, so you can take a look at it there. So that's what it looks like from the side of the skull. This is the view from behind. And then, of course, here's the top of our skull. One of the things on this particular specimen you might notice is that the cranial suture bones or suture lines between the cranial bones are really, really visible. Um, and that actually is just a little bit because of preservation. Um, cranial sutures tend to be more visible when you're younger, and as you age, they become less and less visible. Um, so that may also be the case with this particular specimen, that this was a younger individual at the time of their death. All right, so now that you've had a, a chance to get a good look at Homo heidelbergensis, what do we know about this species? Well, first let's talk about when and where it lives. This species lived between about 700,000 years ago to roughly 200,000 years ago. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the actual depth of age of our species, you might realize that, hey, this guy actually overlapped with some of the earliest members of anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Our species first appears in the fossil record at about 300 to 325,000 years ago. These guys were around then as well. So they lived roughly 500,000 years ago um, in the middle of the Pleistocene. They are found all over um, in, on three different continents. There's examples of them in Europe, and that's primarily where they're found. Um, but there's other examples, like this guy right here is a specimen from Africa. And there have been some other examples, potentially from, um, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold. <laughs> um, there are some other examples, potentially from Asia as well. Now, Homo heidelbergensis is kind of interesting. Um, because of the sheer size of some of its features. So you may remember on Wednesday when we talked about Homo antecessor, how it looked a little bit slender, 
It was starting to have sort of a flat face. It wasn't as big and chunky looking as some of the other specimens that we've talked about. This guy's kind of the exact opposite. It's got some very human-like features, but it's also got really big, thick cranial bones. Um, and in fact, that's what we see with the Neanderthals as well. So if you tune in and for our next session on Monday, we're going to talk about the Neanderthals, um, and you'll see a similar type of anatomical structures and shapes as well. Um, we know that these guys have overall wider faces and even like a wider nose. This is a pretty big nasal aperture and nasal opening. Um, you can see that they've got these big, huge brow ridges. These are just about the most noticeable brow ridges that we've seen in the species short series. Um, so these guys are really big and thick and chunky. Um, the cranial bones overall are pretty thick. So you see these big, thick cheekbones, you got the big brow ridge. Um, the maxilla even is pretty thick, so the upper jaw. Um, all over, you've got really big, thick, prominent bones. Now, we talked a little bit with Antecessor about the forehead and how there's not really any evidence of a forehead in that species. Same thing with Homo heidelbergensis. You're not seeing much of a forehead here, but it is starting to change a little bit. So this is what sometimes anthropologists call an emerging forehead. So it's not quite this big vertical forehead the way that we have, but it is starting to change a little bit and starting to, there's starting to be a little bit more space in the frontal bone before it actually curves back to the head. Overall, um, average Homo heidelbergensis brain size, so even though these guys are pretty thick and chunky, um, is about 1,200 cubic centimeters, which is almost the same size as our brains. Our brains are just a tiny bit bigger on average. They're between 1,300 and 1,350 cc's, um, or cubic centimeters is what that means. So starting to have very human-like brain size, um, starting to be anatomically very human-like in size. Um, on average, um, males of this species are about five feet, nine inches tall. Females tend to be a little bit shorter at about five feet, two inches tall. So this species, because of that difference in height and some other differences between the, the sexes and certain features, is a little bit sexually dimorphic. And you may remember that sexual dimorphism is basically a difference in size and shape with certain features uh, based on sex. And that in fact, is what we see with Heidelbergensis as well. So there's some degree of sexual dimorphism. Like all members of the genus Homo, this is an obligate biped. So they were moving around upright on two legs. Now, the most famous site for Homo heidelbergensis is a site in Spain um, in the same region of Spain, actually, that we talked about the Homo antecessor sites, except the site that is most famous for Heidelbergensis in Spain is called Cima de los Huesos. And at this site, there have actually been more than 5,000 bony elements that belong to this particular species. So they've been found in this particular site basically a big jumble of fossil finds. There are at least 30 individuals, possibly a few more. Um, and actually all of these different finds from the Cima de los Huesos archeological context, um, they represent more than 90% of what we know of this species from the fossil record anywhere in the world. Not only that, but this particular site has yielded some bear fossils in the same archeological context. So suggesting that somehow they were using bear some way or coexisting with bear, um, not necessarily in the domesticated animal sense, but just they were coming into contact with them in the natural world. Um, there's also been some examples of some stone tools found. And in particular, there's a really famous one that's been sort of given the nickname Excalibur. It's in a Shulian hand axe that would have been 
theoretically good for chopping, but it's actually a little bit more intricate than a typical Acheulean hand axe. So it's led some people to suggest that maybe it wasn't actually a functional thing, but it was intentionally buried with the individuals at this site as some sort of early burial ritual. Now this would be a really early burial ritual because the, the fossils at this site date to about 350,000 years ago. So there's not really any clear cut evidence of ceremonial burial in the hominin fossil record at that point. But the suggestion that maybe this is going on with some of these archaic homo sapiens certainly is a very interesting one. Now, I mentioned that Homo heidelbergensis is actually found in various parts of the world, not just in Spain. And in fact, this specimen that we've been looking at here is from a site in Zambia um, that was initially called Broken Hill. This fossil was actually found in 1921. So this is something that goes really far back in the historical, um, or rather in the history of paleoanthropology. It was found by a Swiss miner, um, but it's been repeatedly studied because it is so complete and such a remarkable find. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention in today's session um, is a little bit about Homo heidelbergensis genetics. We talked about Homo antecessor and the 800,000 year old genetic sequence that was obtained from tooth enamel from that particular species. There's also been some sequences done from an uh, individual that was roughly 350 to 400,000 years old um, from Cima de los Huesos. And they have done genetic sequencing of this. And it suggests, much like we see with the antecessor specimens, that there's a very close genetic relationship with the Neanderthals. What we find from the Cima de los Huesos genetic sequence is that there's actually some evidence that suggests that perhaps the uh, species Homo heidelbergensis was sort of a, a pre-Neanderthal. So it basically saying that there's this really close genetic relationship between Neanderthals, Homo heidelbergensis, and potentially some of the later hominin species as well. Um, so there's a lot of intermingling going on between the different hominins that live in various parts of the world. We know that um, at about 325,000 years ago, um, there were anatomically modern humans, there were Homo heidelbergensis, and very soon after that was a later species called Homo naledi that unfortunately we're not going to get to in this series. Um, but is really an interesting species coming out of Africa. Um, so I recommend looking into Homo naledi if you're really interested in hominin evolution. Okay, um, so I think this is where I'm going to stop our discussion for today. Thank you all for joining me. And if you have any additional questions, please put them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next week for the conclusion where we will talk about the Neanderthals on Monday and then finally, Homo sapiens on Wednesday. Have a good weekend.